One Piece chapter 1050. Now this chapter went with the most normal outcome of things considering what happened in the last chapter with Luffy and Kaido's clash with Luffy seemingly delivering the final blow to Kaido, right? With Kaido being sent underground, which is very interesting as well as considering that Big Mom was also sent into the earth as well. So it seems that Oda is sort of focusing on those two being defeated in the same way, which actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it given that Big Mom and Kaido were a part of rocks and them sort of getting defeated in the same way kind of symbolizes the end of the old era right and this essentially marks the beginning of luffy's era or i guess you could say the era of the worst generation right the new era so i did like that we do also know that kaido is definitely knocked out for the good because we see that he starts to revert back to his human form from his full transformation which is something that normally happens when zone users are defeated right not in all cases but in some cases they do lose control of their devil fruit which in turn turns them back into base form and that's what we see here with kaido so we know for certain that kaido is defeated and is knocked out for good the same can be said for big mom as well because we see that she hasn't made any attempts to recover or come back so she as well has been knocked out for good now are they dead most likely not big mom and kaido are very essential in the story and i think we are going to see them again considering that there are some things some mysteries that we don't know yet in terms of big mom's story we still know that alabama is kind of in store for her maybe we don't know how that's gonna play out but kaido there's still a bit of mystery in terms of rocks and again his origin story hasn't been revealed again when it comes to the flashback that we got with kaido about 80 percent of the stuff that was revealed there we actually already knew or it was kind of referenced or hinted so in terms of what we got with kaido that was way too little and again it was already information that we knew right the only thing that we didn't know about was the earlier stages of kaido's life when he was in the vodka kingdom that was new information but apart from that the other stuff that we got was something that you could sort of reference based on the information we got before right so again the kaido flashback to me seems very incomplete and i think we're gonna get more now i don't know how we're gonna segue into kaido's flashback because we see here that he's defeated and knocked out and for the most part when flashbacks are revealed they're usually told while said character is alive or is conscious right it usually segues when the character is going through some sort of moment but here we see that kaido is knocked out so we don't know when we are going to get this flashback with rocks and kaido's origin story again which tells me that we are most likely going to see more of kaido so when it comes to the ending of kaido versus luffy here i would consider this to be a very average ending to a fight i personally have it probably on the same scale as the flamingo versus luffy's ending um there, again there was nothing really special about you know the ending it was definitely something that we have seen in the story time and time again again which isn't a bad thing but i think a lot of people were expecting more because these two characters especially kaido plays a massive role in the story so we were expecting his send-off to be a bit more special in comparison to the other antagonist we've seen in the show so again i'm fine with the defeat here but i think i wanted more a bit more when it comes to kaido especially his flashback right because i think that was definitely cut a bit short and i do think oda will go back to that flashback and we're going to get more details there in terms of origin and his correlation to rocks but i'm not sure when that's gonna happen but it does have to happen when kaido is definitely conscious because a flashback can only be told through a character when they are conscious or awake or you know actually in the story so this definitely tells me that kaido is going to get back up now i have said that if kaido does get back up his interaction with luffy is definitely going to be a lot different because i think that kaido in that final clash that he had with luffy i think he recognized luffy as joy boy so given that he knows that this is the individual that he's been waiting for i'm not sure if he's gonna have that same animosity towards luffy anymore now i'm not saying that him and luffy are going to become friends but there's going to be some sort of interesting interaction between him and luffy after the fact right so that's something that's going to be interesting and i wonder where oda is going to take that so again when it comes to kaido versus luffy i consider this to be a very okay ending you know it was fine but i wouldn't consider it to be a great finale but again we don't know what oda has in store the arc isn't over so there's still the possibility that they're different things could happen now we do see that luffy is confirmed as the winner of this fight which is something that a lot of people were waiting for because you know in the previous chapters we were unsure because luffy didn't get that title box of defeat like every other character had with their battles right we saw big mom most of the flying six and the calamities i believe so we were definitely waiting on that title box for luffy and we finally get that in this chapter now we have seen a case where the title box even though it's a confirmation of the feat doesn't necessarily mean that 
that said character cannot get back up and start fighting again. We saw this with Luffy in which in the rooftop when he lost to Kaido, we get a official confirmation box that Kaido did win that fight. However, we saw that Luffy got back up and the fight started again. So even if these title box of defeat are considered to be confirmation that said character was defeated, it definitely isn't the end all be all of the battle. So I'm not sure if Oda is potentially giving leeway of something else happening. But again, based on what we got in this chapter with everyone sort of celebrating and everyone's wills being fulfilled, it definitely makes you think that this is the end of the battle for sure, right? There isn't any other way you could take this as, right? But as the finale of a insane battle. Now, we'd also get to see the reactions of Luffy defeating Kaido here. Of course, everyone is in good spirits because they had just accomplished the impossible. Given the odds that they were in the beginning of this fight and how it turned out, it was definitely a miracle. This was 20 years in the making and we're seeing that realization come to reality here. So this was definitely a great moment for the Alliance, especially the Samurai and more so the Scabbards because this is something that they endured for 20 years, right? The buildup, the emotions, this moment right here was something that all of them lived for. So seeing that realized here is honestly amazing. Of course, we had Kayla Law smiling like the two badasses they are. Now, Apu's reaction is very interesting. He is actually in shock that Luffy was able to do that, which is which actually makes a lot of sense because, again, he thought that Kaido was invincible, right? I think most of the Beast Pirates thought that. But with Apu, given his record of being very snake-like, it's very likely that he is going to reveal this information to whoever he wants to, right? Specifically Morgans, because that was something that was talked about earlier when he was talking to the CP0. So I think Apu more than likely will give this information to Morgans, in which Morgans more than likely will hype up Luffy just like he did before. And this time it's actually justified because Luffy did defeat Yonko. Same for a lawn kid, you know, they defeated Yonko as well. So the bounty reveals are definitely going to be crazy. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to get them in Wano or post, most likely post, because that's the usual scheme that Oda tends to do when it comes to bounty reveals. It's usually after the arc and when we're transitioning into the next arc. So I definitely see a poo here contacting Morgans, telling him as to the events that just transpired on Onigashima. Now, moving on to Momonosuke here, because something very interesting happens. Now, we get to see a conversation between Momonosuke and Zunisha in which Momo tells Zunisha to wait for opening the borders of Wano as he's thought about it some more in which Zunisha replies by saying that he's going to wait on his judgment right so it's obvious that Momonosuke has realized something again we don't know what that is but he's not in the rush to open up Wano now this is very interesting because it's potentially leading towards things happening before we get to that point perhaps there's something Momonosuke needs to do before opening up the borders right what that is we will have to see but that was very interesting for sure now we end off the chapter with the nine scabbers making it to the flower capital and here it seems like we're finally going to get the reveal of Momonosuke in his human form and then him being introduced as the new shogun of Wano now initially I thought something was going to happen in which the people of the flower capital were going to to see Momonosuke do something in which he saves them right now he did do that obviously with Onigashima but the citizens did not see that so they don't know who's responsible for saving them so I th initially I thought that's how it's gonna go but here it's going a different route in which they're gonna introduce a new person that they don't necessarily know so the reactions are gonna be a bit off initially but I think as they get a glimpse of his face and Momonosuke sort of perhaps resembling Odin then it might be more believable now we have to remember that 20 years had passed during this whole thing so if momonosuke were to come back he should be 20 years older so if they see this form of momonosuke being you know 20 years older then it would be more believable that the kozuki family are finally back now it didn't have the heroic aspect that i thought it would have with you know them seeing momonosuke you know stop onigashima but this outcome is definitely fine as well i do also want to mention toki's prophecy here about the nine shadows being casted now i'm not sure if it's going to be this moment but we do see them appearing as shadows to the citizens of the flower capital so it could happen here but i'm not sure personally because i feel like that should have been a much more bigger moment than this because there's been a lot of highlight on that prophecy so i was expecting a massive moment for that again that might be revealed in the next chapter so we will have to wait and see how that plays out but that's pretty much it for this video guys i'd appreciate it if you drop a like on this video comment down below what you guys think subscribe to their channel if you want to see more content hit the bell if you want to get notified for future videos you can follow me on twitter at fair space but it is fair guys and i will see you folks later peace